So there's a moral reason, which is that everybody deserves um, to have their human dignity acknowledged and, and defended. There's also a really practical reason. This country is, if you look at the demographics, becoming browner and blacker, and at the same time, the, that part of the population that's growing is the part of the population that's most struggling economically and educationally. Um, it's be even beyond educational, because it's systems that are existing, they're even outside of your education system, like your economic system. Right now, there's a high correlation between race and a shorter lifespan, uh, less opportunity, uh, less college graduation. Uh, if we can change that, um, and we want to change it not by making the rest of the society worse off, but making the entire society better off. The problems with the United States Supreme Court's way that it deals with problems of structural racism is that, like so many white Americans, the Supreme Court seems to think that the problems of, of uh, race and racism are pretty much behind us, not completely solved, but they seem to think that um, we have a, we have overcome most of what we have to overcome, having abolished slavery and having enacted civil rights legislation, and it's now time to move on and deal with other issues. Equity, and again, in communities of color, we talk about racial equity, but I think in the mainstream, it's a scary topic. People don't want to challenge the status quo. There's a whole lot of uh, people, white people, who think the system is just fine the way it is, and that, in fact, we have solved the problem by providing equal opportunity, but they're not really seeing that opportunity is still not equal.